seems like sort of Teal and uh, Musk, they were sort of, they were more sort of visionaries. You, you mentioned at some point that uh, there's a philosopher that uh, uh, Peter Thiel likes named uh, Rene Girard, right? Um, and it, he sees humans as a mimetic machines in the sense that humans look at to other humans to decide what they want. Now that's sort of like a not, that's like sort of the opposite perspective. It's like, we're going to tell people, you know, what they want. We're going to lead them in a certain direction. And it seemed like uh, Elon with, uh, with uh, X was sort of the same thing. Like the market was giving him certain signals, but he was like, no, we're going to, you know, we're going to consolidate all your finances into, into one place. So you sort of have this sort of a uh, nice mix of like visionaries and like practical people. Um, that you know, and, see- and by the way, yeah, go ahead. I, I think that 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 it's it's an it's one of the most interesting, least understood, and complex parts of these startups is that there is there is always a tension between vision and practicality, between the story of what you're doing and what the hard reality is on the ground, right? And so you you I, I had a few people tell me they said you know what what Elon was exceptional at was actually outlining what the future of finance would look like, right? In very specific terms down to the mainframe level, like what databases needed to be upgraded, right? That, that, that was powerful. It would draw people in. It drew recruits in. Recruits would listen to him talk and like, sign me up, right? Like, like let's go. Um, the other part of it is you, you do need people who, and I would say there are two individuals who I really, uh, got to understand their contributions to the company. One is Amy, Amy Rowe Clement, uh-huh. uh, and the other is David Sachs, and they're both on the product team. And and they, along with the other members of the product team, you know, you have to take that and, and translate it into something that is going to work, that's going to work in multiple currencies, that's going to work across time zones, that's going to work when the website is down, that's not going to lose people money, that's not going to get defrauded, right? So it's part of why the book has more... Like, if you were to just interview the, the sort of, like, let's say, just... Um, Reed Hoffman and Peter Thiel and Elon Musk, you actually wouldn't get the richness of this story. You you have to dive in. I actually, the way I dove in was I looked at customer complaints. So I, I read like thousands of pages of customer complaints to find the ones that, that sort of stood out to me. And it made me realize like they were actually managing, you know, the success of a product, but an unintended success has like unintended consequences. And the unintended consequences were people were really mad when they couldn't get their money. And then the company would have to race to solve that problem. And so I think there, but I like that you point out, like there's this balance between the, the, the vision and the, the, the hard reality. And that's, I, I don't have any kind of like conclusions about it per se, but I think yeah. both are vital and both, you know, they find expression in PayPal. Yeah. I mean, the idealism that you talk about in the book and you've touched on here, I mean, is very interesting because so often they would be like, oh, you know, so they would try to recruit somebody and that person would be like, I have this, you know, safer, maybe more, even more financially lucrative offer from somewhere else. And it's like, no, you're going to build something. You're going to do something very, very cool. And like people are like, people would be sold on that. Um, And, you know, it's like, it's sort of easy, you know, like, so to be idealistic, like, okay, so I've used PayPal and, you know, you've probably used PayPal and a lot of people who've uh, listened to this have used PayPal. We don't see it as like some romantic thing usually, right. right? We push a button and money goes from, you know, A to B. It's not like, you know, you can see how SpaceX would, you know, capture the uh, imagination of, of little kids. Uh, but, you know, PayPal, we don't really see it like that. But, it, I mean, it, it is... It is. There is something to get excited about. I mean, objectively, I mean, it, it you know made people able to you know send money around and made people able to uh, you know start their own businesses. A lot of us, you know, it seems like you know thousands or you know whatever uh, tens of thousands of business would wouldn't have been bought, viable without without PayPal. A lot of people would have had less you know connection. It, we, you know, it was it was important. I mean, for you know mil- touched millions and millions of lives. Um, but you know, it's not it's not naturally something people get idealistic about. But it seems like these the people involved in PayPal, maybe the people in the Valley more generally, could sort of see ideal and romance and beauty in things that other people couldn't as easily. Does that make sense? It does, and and it's it's certainly a part of it. it makes it, you know, it, it. I like the way you put it. I, I had two two thoughts. The first is um, the romance was for many of the people who joined. It was, the romance was in the other people who were already at the company. Yeah. And so what would happen is they would meet someone and I had several, this happened several times, like someone, I would describe how they got to the company and they said, well, you know, I stopped by the office <laughs> and, and I wasn't exactly sold on this whole Palm Pilot thing, but I met the team and the team was, you know, intense and they had all these ideas and there was so much energy there and they were there at all hours. And I, I had, you know, two people, there are two moments in the book that where I get to say, these are my people, right? Uh, Denise Aptekar, this member of the product team, 
she said, I, you know, I wasn't sold on the product vision, but these are my people like this. They're clearly like they want to work hard. They want to do things in the world. So the, the romance was in actually the, the team dynamic. I would say there were a subset of people who were recruited by the revolution in finance big vision. Um, but that vision, you know, it sort of dissipates as the as the company becomes a, a person to person payments mechanism with all of the, you know, like you said, like John F. Kennedy's not going to give stirring speeches about person to person payments, <laughs> right? Um, but the 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 in, the intelligence in the room, the problem solving instinct in the room, the love of puzzles, the belief that they were doing something big and important, uh, all of that did drive recruiting, and it did drive the ability to actually build this team. And so I don't, you know, I don't think we can discount it. Um, it, it you you have to be careful that it doesn't become one of these like you know from the show Silicon Valley like one of these like cliches or jokes, but. Th- their ability to sell that vision is part of what makes them it re- allows them to recruit some of the most exceptional people in the world. And when you don't have, you know, actual stock, when you don't have big fat salaries, when you don't, when your company's under siege all the time, like you are going to sell this David versus Goliath story, right? Uh, one of Max Levchin's favorite films is Kurosawa's Seven Samurai, and he watched he's w- watched it over a hundred times, and he calls it his like sole source of management training before PayPal. And I get the feeling that they tried to project an image in which they were a small band, right? Like kind of fighting the elements uh, in the same way, in like a small group of samurai. That is what attracts people and, and leaves, leads people to, to leave other jobs to join them. Yeah. Yeah, right. So yeah, so it's, it's sort of a, there's a draw. There's these, these are just leaders. I mean, and they're, they're drawing people in and people want to be, uh, you know, around that sort of idealism and they want to be around that energy. I mean, it was also, you know, sort of, uh, it was uh, sort of instructive on, on human nature, sort of the, the tribal aspect of it. Right. I, you know, I like when like they, you know, they're like, Oh, we got to kill eBay. Like eBay is like, you know, their enemy and you know, they're, they're just like, you know, they're, they're, it's like, you know, it's like some kind of, you know, just tribal thing. And then like they get bought by, uh, uh, you know, they get bought by eBay eventually. And then they're like, you know, they're sort of like, uh, they're, they're just, they're, they're seething. They're like, they form the PayPal click and they like, uh, they mutilate like the dolls, the mongoose dolls that the, uh, the eBay gives them. Right. And so you see this human yeah. nature too. It's like people don't even need, like, they don't even need a, a like a, a reason, right? Like even if, even, right. if, even if there was no idealistic, you know, message at all, it's just people like winning and they like forming tribes and they like fighting. That's why they go to, you know, sporting events and, you know, they, uh, you know, this is, this is nationalism. I mean, this is just something, you know, deep in human nature and, you know, that really comes through in the book too. Yeah. It's, it's a big part of it, although it, it's productive. So sure, it's, it's, a yeah. uh, it's, it's productively tribal, let's call it. Right. And here's, here's how, um, there was a, it's not in the book, but I interviewed this wonderful uh, designer named George Ishii, and he shared with me a reflection. He said, you know, we had so many outward battles that it kept the internal battles like to a, a manageable minimum. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a design, the head of design and UX at PayPal, Sky Lee, uh, said, nothing brings a company together like having a mortal enemy. Um, and so in a way, like, there was a tribal quality. And by the way, like there were definitely fights within the company. I document some of that. It wasn't some like, you know, happy United team at all times. It was a lot of, it was a pressurized place, but there was so much external pressure and so much risk of failure. The team would sort of like, they would, they would activate on whenever a problem happened, they'd fix it or fight the opponent to, you know, as needed. So the, it was a productively tribal relationship with some of these outside entities because they felt like they were doing something that uh, it had a sort of quasi existential quality to it. Yeah. And, you know, when I, when I think about, when I think about the the message and when I read about sort of what people were thinking at the beginning of PayPal and I think about, you know, Elon's vision for uh, X and the, the Cofinity vision, it just it gave me deja vu when I read it, when I uh, listen to the crypto people today, when they talk about sending money, you know, cross borders without, uh, uh, you know, without any, uh, you know, without any interference from government, it sort of has this libertarian sort of emancipatory, you know, helping people in, in the developing world, uh, you know, the, this vision. Um it seems like the dream, the dream is still alive. It's just sort of shifted to something oh, yeah. people think can be, you know, even more revolutionary. Um, but it, it's, a, it's the same idea, right? The, those barriers haven't gone away. Um, they're still there and there still seems like a lot of work to do. Yeah. And, you know, I would say that it's, it's, a, it's one of the, I'm, I'm glad you picked up on it. It's a very perceptive read. Um, there are echoes of all of the messages from, you know, those days from these people in the, 
writings and tweets and minds and hearts of all of the crypto people, there is a, I would say at the practical level, you know, Elon has a very well-formed critique about the databases and infrastructure that underlie a lot of banking and government finance, that the code is old, that the computers like don't have good security. Um, he maintains that the criticism is still true. Those things haven't necessarily been upgraded. Um, these, the, even the ACH technology that a lot of us use to get our paychecks was developed in like the 1970s, right? Um, and so you have like the fundamental critique hasn't gone away. Uh, some of the messaging obviously has found its way into crypto and other other ventures. Um, I would also say that the um, this sense that the thing to do is to not like try to persuade some other established entity to upgrade itself, but instead to try to come in and like just rewrite the script, right? That's an abo That's a part of this place. It's a part of what makes Silicon Valley what it is, is, is really a sort of like fundamental thing that says, you've been doing this wrong. I, I and we can do it better and I'm just going to go create it and it will, yeah. it will be better, right? There is something about that, that this isn't a day job. You know, it's like, it's not nor that's like a thing that we ought to like look at with, like to, to look at it from the outside in, it's not that someone's signing up for a nine to five. What they feel like in many cases they're signing up for is a mission, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is a different orientation to a job than someone who says, this is my paycheck, right? Um, and and I, I think there's, I mean, I think there's something powerful in that. I think there's something, there's a certain romance about it. It also makes entrepreneurship something more than just the kind of accretion of, of just like kind of personal wealth, right? Like, like many of these people, particularly the people at the top, like this is what they do. Their orientation to the world is to be usefully irritated, find problems to solve so, and solve them. Mm. It, it's really not so much around like retirement money because many of them have had that for a long time and they could have retired a long time ago, but they keep at this particular enterprise, right? Uh, it's a kind of interesting, like it, it's, a, it's an interesting way to think about it. Mm.